Did you know that in 2015, when Windows 10 first launched, you were able to install it without it even asking for a Microsoft account? Crazy to think about 10 years later, because eventually they did start asking for you to log in, but at first, you at least had a button that let you skip it, until they made it only visible when you had no internet connection, and in Windows 11, they just completely eradicated it. This was actually a problem for me, because when I built my current computer, I had no internet connection because of an Ethernet chipset issue, but luckily all I had to do to fix it was just install a new driver, except I couldn't do that because I first needed to install Windows, which required me to have internet because they just really wanted to force me to log into their account. So the only way for me to install Windows was to bypass the online account requirement through the command line, but recently, Microsoft removed even those commands to get the remaining tiny fraction of users to sign in. Of course, there actually still are ways to bypass it, but how long are those going to last? And at this point, if you have no explicit need to use Windows, why not just try installing Linux? And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today, because I also want to try out a new distro called Omarki. Now, rather than an actual distro, Marky is more like a pre-configured version of Arch that's very opinionated because it has already made all the choices for you, which means that rather than spending time on configuring and setting up everything from scratch, you are copy-basting someone else's Arch plus Hyperland setup that's already ready to go, which can be a good thing especially if it's actually very well configured, which it supposedly is, so I'm very curious to try it out, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I should probably do is download the ISO. Okay, that was pretty fast. Now I gotta just burn it to the disk somehow, or rather flash it to my drive. Oh yeah, remember this setup? This is the setup that I set up in the last Linux video. I've booted into it like maybe five times, but every time I do use it, I'm surprised at how well it works. Like graphically speaking, everything is running smoothly and it is honestly a joy to use. I really like the file manager. For example, we just copy some image and I can paste Control V into the file manager and then I can preview it, kind of like the macOS quick view. I think the only issue it has is that video files freeze with the preview. It's actually working right now. But what isn't working is the Bitwarden extension. It is just a blank page on Firefox for me on Linux sometimes. So for the first time ever, I installed the Brave browser to try it out. But the issue with that is that if I take this window and move it to a different monitor, it immediately crashes. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to start moving it upwards. And wait, what? Okay, today it's not crashing. Like, I swear, it's apparently even a pretty well-documented issue, so I'm not sure why it's not working, or rather why it's working right now. Anyway, I finished flashing the USB, so now I gotta boot into it and wipe this entire install. Yeah, of course, my BIOS goes on the vertical monitor. Why is my mouse sliding like an air hockey puck? Bro, it's so hard to aim. Please hit the... Oh, aim, go, oh. Okay, I got it. Ooh. Um, I think the start screen is hard-coded for 1080p. Whoa, would you look at that? Installed in 4 minutes and 4 seconds. Oh, oh, this looks kind of cool actually. Okay, it's time. Okay, now I want to record my screen with OBS. What if I click on this corner here? Ooh, what if I go to apps? What if they have OBS installed? No, not IBS. Oh. Oh, they actually have scaling done as well. Okay, we already have screen recording and I've literally done nothing. Now I need to set up my monitors and this is running Hyperland. So usually I will go into configuration files, but let's see how it works here. Setup. Monitors. Let's see. Whoa, I have never seen a setup like this before. Okay, I'm going to copy paste my monitor setup from my previous script. So for that, I have to open a web browser. If I type browser, it only has Chromium. Okay, that's fine for now. Oh, nice skin. I have never used NeoVim. I'm pretty sure this is... Oh, wait, I can just paste like this. Uh, okay, I finally got all of my monitors set up. And out of the box, NVIDIA drivers are also installed. Style setup, trigger, capture, color? They have a screen color picker right out of the box. These are features that I'd otherwise spend time on setting up. Oh, we got gate and live. Oh, they got locals, MPV as well. Files, the GNOME project, yes. Does it have the quick view though? 
No. Let's see what it's like to take a screenshot. So trigger, capture, screenshot, screen recording as well. That is a really annoying thing to set up. Region, window, display. Nice. Okay, let's capture region. Oh, this is so smooth. Oh, and it opens up. I can draw here as well. Three days later. Okay, it's been a few days since I installed this distro and the first impressions it left me were so good that I decided that I want to try actually daily driving it. And for that, the first thing I did was start customizing the key bindings. And this was actually kind of confusing because even though you already have so many bindings done for you, you are not supposed to change them in the default configuration files. And in some cases, you also have to unbind a shortcut if you want to override it. So for example, I wanted to use super plus space to toggle floating. Because it was already used by something else, I first had to unbind it. But after I figured out how it works, it was pretty simple. And I even set up my input language switching. I also changed the default editor to VS Code because even though I have used Vim, I've never used NeoVim and most likely I'm going to be using code anyway. Anyway, I also disabled caps by default, as well as added smart borders, which essentially means that if you have only one window open at a time, it doesn't give you borders. However, if you for example open a window, it automatically adds gaps to them. And I also made it so that I can toggle the gaps with a script. I also completely disabled the transparency because it looked like this before and it's really hard to do color sensitive work like that. I also set up my workspaces and I'm pretty sure I had to restart Hyperland for that so that was a bit confusing at first. And I also moved this information bar from top to bottom because I value the space on the top of the screen much more than on the bottom especially because you have buttons like this on the edges of the screen and if you add a top bar on there these locations are going to be a bit shifted which I'm not the biggest fan of. I also discovered that it also has themes so for example Nord makes everything a bit more blue and the nice thing is that it changes the theme for VS Code as well as Chrome as well as your terminal and the file manager and so on completely automatically. So for example if I go and choose the Osaka Jade aka the green theme it automatically makes everything green. Another really important improvement is that I haven't had a single graphical issue on this system and I've been running it for multiple days now. Like everything is extremely smooth and snappy, which is something that I'm able to say for the first time ever in these Linux videos. And I really haven't noticed any big issues, which is why I also decided to install DaVinci Resolve. I had to follow the Arch wiki for installing it, of course, because it doesn't work right out of the box. But if everything is working so well, then I might actually be able to switch over to Linux as my primary operating system. So I decided to start editing this video. And of course, the first issue is that there's no audio on these clips because I recorded them in AAC audio. So I'd have to convert them. But even though this is annoying and is going to slow me down, it's still not a deal breaker. However, then I actually started editing and even though I can drag and drop into the timeline, I cannot drag and drop into the media pool nor this viewer here. And unfortunately, these are going to be deal breaking issues for me. If I have to use the file browser to import every piece of footage that I have, it's just going to be extremely slow. Oh yeah, and another weird issue is that dialogues like this, I cannot move my mouse outside of them. It just resets my mouse to the middle for whatever reason. So the main issue that's preventing me from using Linux for, for example, video editing is the fact that I cannot drag and drop into the media pool and the previewer. I'm pretty sure that this is something to do with Wayland, but I'd really like to know if it's possible for the Hyperland developers to fix this. There might be a technical limitation with it, but maybe it's just a few hours of work for someone. So if any Hyperland developers are watching this, please let me know if it's possible because it would be really nice if I could actually use DaVinci Resolve for editing. Even though I'm really loving this setup and I'd really like to daily drive it for, even if it's not just video editing, but just for everything, if I'm going to be working on videos like every day, then I'm just going to put into Windows because I have no choice. However, I still haven't tried any gaming, so Let's see if this goes better than it did last time. Okay, it launched. The scaling is really weird. Uh, the resolution is also really low. Why does it only go up to 1080? Okay, it's using my 1080p monitor, even though it is on my 4K monitor. That's kind of weird, but this should fix it. Yes. Okay, so far so good. Whoa. We got some night mode on this map. Looks kind of nice. Dude, what if I did like a Rogue Global Elite on CSGO Linux series? I 
I'd prefer League though. Too bad it's banned on Linux. Anti cheat. It's unfortunate because League actually worked perfectly on Linux before through loot Lutris. Come on. <laughs> okay, so this was the Omarki Linux experience, and all I gotta say is that if Drag and Drop worked on DaVinci Resolve, I will be daily driving this right now. And in terms of Omarki itself, some people say that it is not a real distro, but just a glorified rice. And it's kind of true because the name of Omarki literally comes from Omakase in Japanese, which is a word that you basically use when you go to the barber and say, just fuck me up, bro. Which means that everything is already set up for you in an opinionated manner. And personally, I find these pre-configurations extremely helpful because I am somebody that doesn't like spending hours on setting up basic things such as notification managers, authentication agents, drivers, Bluetooth, things like that, especially because I just want my system to work and it to be good so I could to work on it and enjoy it as well. And in terms of enjoyment, it is really enjoyable to use because you already have menus and stuff properly set up. There really isn't that much that you need to do. Yeah, it's not perfect. Some of the installation scripts actually didn't work, so I had to install them myself manually, but it is still the best experience that I've had on Linux, especially when it comes to tiling window managers and Hyperland. So even though I just installed it and did some really basic configuration, it already feels ready to go. Like imagine making this entire system from scratch, especially if you don't even have a vision for what kind of style you're going for or what kind of things you need to do. Like I didn't show this yet, but you can also screen record with region plus audio or just a region. So for example, if I capture the region here, it's going to be recorded and you can even see a tiny recording icon over here. And if you click it, it finishes, gives you a little notification. And if we open that screen recording, look how smooth it is. And it's only eight megabytes, which means that you can actually share it in places like Discord without it hitting the file limit. Setting up things like this takes so much time on your own, especially if you haven't done it before. And I feel like beginners are going to benefit even more from it. But ironically, because it does so much for you, there's a chance that if you're going to run into issues, for example, with changing key bindings and so on, then it's going to be a bit harder to figure things out than if you just had done everything from scratch through Arch. But I still recommend trying it out. So in terms of myself, I really want this drag and drop to start working. So if anyone has any control of making that work, please do that. I'm even not going to give up completely. I might try live streaming on Linux, perhaps trying out different games and stuff and see if they break or not. So if you're interested in that, as well as the follow-up in seeing whether or not I can actually fully switch over to Linux, then consider subscribing. And thank you for watching. Also, I really recommend just trying out Linux in 2025. Even with NVIDIA, it's working really well.